What's up, class? Evans here. Hope I scared you a little. Ooh. So, today is about engineering tolerances. Engineering tolerances I covered last week. Last week, um, on Friday, I sent you a PowerPoint through Edmodo, obviously. And I covered over engineering tolerances as best as I could. I hope it made sense to you, and I hope you got some good notes. So today's assignment is um, working through engineering tolerances and kind of practicing the basic mathematics and kind of understanding it a little bit. So you should have this assignment. Apology to those who went to Kano and picked up this paper. This was the fourth assignment, so I hope you didn't try to work on it on your own. So now, now is the time to work on it. So engineering tolerances here. You can print out this paper, but you don't have to. If you do want to print it out, just go into the comments below and you can find the Word document so that you can print it out yourself. It is four pages. And you are welcome to type on it with, uh, with a word. Um, just typing it in yourself. We're putting in uh, little um, word boxes, and that's fine. And then just save it and send it to me. You can print it out and write it out by hand as long as it's legible. Either one is fine. So in this one, it tells you that you need a highlighter and that you're going to be labeling. The first two pages are going to be labeling limit dimensions, unilateral tolerances, and bilateral tolerances, and that you're going to need to highlight it. And I'll show you how to do that in Inventor. Before we do that, let's just take a quick look back at engineering tolerances. There are limit dimensions, which look like this. It has an upper and lower limit, no specified tolerance, no specified dimension, just the upper and lower limits. Bilateral tolerance, like number two up here, and a plus or minus sign. It makes it pretty easy to remember. It has two signs, meaning bi, bilateral. Unilateral had the two signs separated, but only in one direction could it go. So in this case, it could have 5,000 of an inch larger than the specified dimension, but not smaller. And honorable mention down over to here, where we have general tolerances. General tolerances are tolerances, and it's sort of covering it up. General tolerances are tolerances that cover the entire drawing, unless it is specified. So let's start highlighting things. And let me show you how to do that in a Word document. So we're looking for, in the dimensioning, we're looking for tolerances that are already in place. It has more than just one dimension, obviously, or just more than one number. To label it, for example, I've got this rocker arm. It's got three uh, areas where a rod could go through, and then it's got a connection bar. So this is the adjustable rocker arm as it says there we've got two section views here that are kind of are called removed sections where it shows the the like the cut profile of it in order for me to highlight inside of the thing what i would recommend because this isn't this is just a picture so we can't highlight it with the highlight tool the best way i would think to do it is to use a shape i would use like the rectangle or the oval tool and highlight it with a box. Now, as you notice, it covers it over, but it opens up a new window called Format. So make this sh shape outline like red or, or something like that, or yellow, something bright, and the shape fill, uh, put no fill. To label it, I'm going to do Insert, Shapes, and then I'm going to use a text box. So that type right there is a limit dimension. Let's just, just to make it faster, we'll just put limit. So it's a limit dimension. I click on it. Control C for copy, Control V for paste. That is another limit dimension. And another limit dimension. And I can do the same thing with the word label. It seems to uh, paste it right on top of where you're at for whatever weird reason. If you're not clicked on it and hit like uh, control paste, it puts it in random places. Ah, here. Actually, this is a perfect spot because this right here is my general talk. 
There we go. So I've sufficiently labeled um, everything that is there. I have three limit dimensions and one general tolerance. I'm going to have you do this top part on your own. Let me do the bottom one just to give you some more examples, and then I'll let you do that one on your own. So right now, if you feel confident, I would suggest pausing the video. There's no harm in pausing it right now and trying this one on your own, then unpausing it, and then seeing if you missed anything, see if you did the labels right. You can always relabel them, no big deal. All right, welcome back. So I am going to add all of my labels right there. I have four or five of them that I labeled. I've got a general tolerance, I got a bilateral tolerance, another bilateral tolerance, a limit, dimension and a unilateral tolerance and let me label those for you right now too i hope you got those all down so general tolerance here this covers everything everything that isn't labeled red right now this is a unilateral tolerance because it has plus four thousandths of an inch but minus nothing this is a limit dimension because there's no specified dimension but it does have an upper and lower limit this is a bilateral tolerance, and this is a bilateral tolerance because they both have the plus or minus signs. Notice how much is in the general tolerance, though. If it has uh, one number after the decimal place, it's um, two hundredth of an inch. Two decimal places is one hundredth of an inch. Three decimal places is five thousandths of an inch, and then angles are just plus or minus half of an uh, of an angle. So that covers everything. Don't forget to come up here and label this one on your own. You should have five labels, five labels. All right, now let's move down here and get started on this one. It says, consider the adjustable rocker arm represented in the drawing above. An axle is to pass through the smallest hole. The manufacturer is considering buying bar stock for the axle that is manufactured according to the following drawings using the same general tolerances as those specified on the rocker arm drawing. Answer the following questions and show your work. Now, it says that they're looking for bar stock. When you see the word stock, it just means like right off the shelf from another company. So you're working for a company that produces and manufactures uh, this right here. And they want bar stock for the smallest hole there. This is the smallest hole there um, for some sort of rod axle that's supposed to go through there. It says use the same general tolerances. So we want to buy bar stock that at least follows the same general tolerances that we're following. Our general tolerances here are uh, two decimal places is 0 0.03 plus or minus 0 0.03. Three decimal places are plus or minus uh, 0 0.01. Let me write that down here. It said 0 0.03 and for two decimal places, Zero 0.01. So that is our tolerance that we're going to match for the same bar that we want. It says, what is the tolerance? The acceptable amount of dimensional variation for this uh, dimension rod. So let's look back at our definition of tolerance. If you remember, tolerance is the upper limit minus the lower limit. So we're wanting for diameter. For the diameter, that's here. So we have our specified dimension, and that is 0.525. That's our specified dimension. Then we need to add 0 0.005, and that would give us 0.530, right? So that's our upper limit. Our lower limit is 0 0.025. There isn't a lower limit. So this one's actually pretty easy. It's just 0 0.530 minus 0 0.525, and that would be uh, 0 0.005, kind of where we started. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight my answer there. 
Now you don't need to just come in and write your answer. You're going to come in and write, of course, the whole thing. Don't just write your answer. Don't write 0 .005. That's the answer, but you need to write how we got there. You don't have to write this part though. That's fine. What is the tolerance for the rod length? Well, that's what we'll have here. We have 3.00, that is two decimal places. So two decimal places would be 0 0.03. So we would have uh, three plus 0 0.03, so that's 0 0.03, and three minus 0 0.03. So that would be 2.97. When I subtract those, I will get point zero six I'm gonna hit control C for copy and control V for paste all right is the fit between the rod and the hole a clearance fit an interference fit or a transition fit all right so we need to look at the hole at the top the hole is 536 and 531. That's our diameter. Let me just put diameter. So that's our existing diameter for the rocker arm that we designed. The rod has this uh, upper and lower limit. So is the fit between the rod and the hole clearance fit, an interference fit, or a transition fit? So our diameter, the largest it can be is 536. The largest this one can be is 530. The smallest we can have is 531. That's still bigger than the largest that we would have for the rod that we have up there. So that means there's always space. That means it's always going to be a clearance fit. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we have our answer there, clearance fit. The reason is, is because the largest and smallest the diameter is on the rocker arm is still a little bit larger than the largest that we have for the rod. So there's always going to be clearance. Okay, what is the allowance between the rod and the smallest hole? All right, let's go reference back to here and look for allowance. Allowance is you take the largest from the rod and the smallest from the inner diameter. So allowance is largest from the rod. The largest the rod can be is 0 0.530. The smallest that the opening is is 0.531. That gives us an allowance of 0.531. 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0.001. So there's always space. That's a very, very tight fit. To be honest, it's a very tight tolerance. If the design of the assembly machine requires that the rod is sized such that the actual clearance between the rod and the hole is never greater than 0 0.005 inches, will the current rod design meet the requirement? And then explain. So the whole, the clearance between there is never greater than 0 0.05. All right, so we know the tightest the fit works, but let's look at the other end of the spectrum. Let's look at the largest versus the smallest. So this was the largest of the rod and the smallest of the rocker arms diameter hole. Now let's look at the opposite side of that, which is the largest that the diameter can be is 0.5. That's the diameter of the rocker arm. The smallest the diameter gets of the rod is 0.525. That means we will have, if I subtract that, 0 0.011. So that's, that's much bigger than uh, 5 thousandths of an inch. So that means it won't work. Will the current rod design meet the requirements? No, it won't. There is too much clearance in the 
tolerance. If we always want 5,000 of an inch, then we need a tolerance to that because here we'll have too much space. There'll be too much wiggling back and forth when we find a lot of the larger uh, diameters on the rocker arms with the smaller rod possibilities. We're going to get a lot of movement or play and then things will wear out fast. And that's not, that's what we don't want. All right, the, mach the machine specified requirements that the rod is longer than 3.025 inches and no shorter than 2.955 inches. Let L represent the actual length of the rod and write the length constraint as a compound inequality. So think of L being in the middle. So we've got 2.955 and 3.025 our length is sitting in between there so if it can't be longer than that that means 3.025 is the maximum it can be it could be equal to it but it can't be greater than that so that type of inequality you can find under symbols would mean that that over there is greater than it but not less than it and then the L on this side, 2.955, it says no shorter than that. So it can be it, it can be equal to it, but it can't be less than it. So that symbol right there is also less than or equal. All right, so take you back to a little bit of algebra there. Will the stock rods always meet the length constraint? So what do we want? That's the question. So if I go back up here, the rod length was 3.03 to 2.97. 3.03 is already greater than that. 2.97 is, is better here. So we're okay on this side. Okay on the minimum, but too large on the max. If the stock rods do not always meet the machine specifications for rod length, how can the manufacturer alter the rod part drawing such that the rod length will always confirm the specifications? Well, you could do several things. We already have our limit dimensions right there. You can say, you know, that's, that's what we want. Or you could just, so we could say, use the numbers above as a limit dimension. But probably what would be better, because this is something super straightforward, I, I would say just, or, or use this, or use 3.00 and then plus or minus. We don't want it larger than 0 0.02 and we don't want it smaller than 2.955. If we just put plus or minus 0 0.02, we could have 32, but 3.02, or we could have 3.98. And that would fit both of our specifications just fine. Right? You could even put a five there and put it right at the edge, and that would be okay. So that would be the best specification. Or, a possible other so we have two choices here or so use those numbers or find a different manufacturer to work with there's probably plenty of people that produce there's probably plenty of people that produce just steel rods that we can purchase from it could be pretty straightforward to just find a different vendor or see if we can convince that vendor to change up their processes if we buy in bulk. There's lots of options for people. What you really want to look for is the price that makes the most sense. You could buy larger stock uh, bars and cut them yourself. There's lots of choices. Uh, we could put that too. So you have plenty of choices. As the engineer, you're looking for the quality choice and the cheapest choice. So you have all these options before you, you would use the one that would be the cheapest, as I said. At the bottom, there are three conclusion questions, and these are very important questions. 
I'm not going to write them out for you. I want to talk about these conclusion questions with you. You need to write down your own information. So the first one says, why do engineers place tolerances on dimensions? That's not too complicated of a question. It's quite simple. Whenever you manufacture something and you put it in a factory and you use all these machinery to make things, you have people working on things, shaping things, uh, even if you have very sophisticated machinery, you're always going to have different sized parts. Now remember, we're talking about, you probably wouldn't be able to notice it with your naked eye. We're talking about thousands of an inch differences. Keep in mind of when I gave you 27 wooden cubes to measure with dial calibers when I first introduced dial calibers for, with uh, when I first introduced dial calibers to you and you had to measure the wooden cubes they were ever so slightly off and you couldn't really notice it yourself right away that there was a big differences once you started measuring it then you could kind of start noticing that there are slight differences between the cubes and those were much bigger off. Sometimes we're just talking about things that are just a, a hair off from each other. So why would engineers add tolerances? The reason why they add tolerances to their dimensions is because we need to know what type of tolerance size for the dimensions will allow the part to function properly. Now, a defective part, a part that's labeled defective, might work right then and there, and it might work for a year, but if you have a five-year warranty on that or you have a lifetime warranty on that and your tolerances say a certain thing but you have uh, a part that falls out of tolerance it slips through it's going to break in a year and you're going to replace it anyways so the whole purpose of putting tolerances is to label defective parts parts that will not work parts that will not work right then and there and parts that will not work down the road before they fall out of their warranty so that's the whole point of the tolerancing. Find defective parts, know what the defective parts and label them, um, help you know what type of manufacturing processes that you're going for. Are you going for high tolerances where, um, or are you going for low tolerances? Depending on which one you're doing, that helps you know the type of machinery you wanna get, the type of manufacturing processes you wanna follow. So that's why we put tolerances on our dimensions number two why are what are the three types of tolerances that appear in a dimension drawing that's easy we labeled them in the assignment above go look for them yourself and go write those three down number three what is the difference between a general and a specific tolerance and how can you tell the difference on a drawing that is another really simple answer a simple question that is a simple answer. Just look at the definition of the word general and look at the definition of the word specific. Specific means I'm talking about one thing. When I message you guys, I put a post on Edmodo. That's like a general tolerance. I'm talking to everybody out there. Then if I send you an individual message, like I email you or I send you a message on your phone or a message on Edmodo, that's like, a specific tolerance. I'm only talking just to you, no one else. So that's the difference between a general tolerance and a specific tolerance. Now, how are they different on the drawing? That's also pretty easy. The general tolerance is on the little tolerance box in the corner of the drawing, and the specific tolerance is actually sitting on the drawing with the dimension itself. So I hope that answers those three questions. I'd encourage you to learn a little bit more of tolerances on your own. If you're really planning on being an engineer, tolerances are something that you're going to have to know how to do and become more familiar with. And you're lucky. You're learning about them when you're in ninth grade. The first time I saw tolerances is probably my sophomore year in college. To say, you guys are already ahead of me. And all the stuff that I taught you on Autodesk Inventor, I learned that in college. So you guys are ahead of me. So I hope that you can take all that you've learned in my class and all that you learned in the rest of your engineering classes and really get a strong start for engineering when you get to college. Um, so I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions, make sure to read 
the comments below to see if anybody else has asked those questions or ask it just yourself. And I will be glad to answer it for you. Thank you and good luck.